had the worst kids in the world, but I realized after just even a week that I was waking up without a headache for the first time in 16 years. So I wasn't going to go back to that. Um, tele the telecommunications was a dead issue in my, uh, in my career, and I'm a teacher now. So they um, uh, offered me a job when I couldn't get a job as a teacher, and went, well, about six months later, and so I took it, and uh, first thing they said is I had to create jobs where there were no jobs. Um, and so I did an assessment of what was going on in the region. And uh, I found a couple really good opportunities. One was proximity. We were very close to Charlotte. And uh, another that we found out was a lot, of, a lot of available workforce, huge unemployment. And finally, we found out serendipitously there were 6,000 people that owned between 5 and 20 acres of land. So that in the Appalachian agrarian tradition, they had preserved their family land. Probably some people here in the audience with Appalachian roots go back to the family land occasionally. So we said, well, if we could do something about that, if we could connect this urban area, Charlotte, with a number of small farms, then we're using the internet then we could create a new economy. We could create an economy that didn't exist. We could create an economy where we created the food system. And so, but in our planning, we said, well, why make it the way that it is? Why emulate a system that we think is broken? So we're, we'll just do the opposite. They're centralized, we'll become regional. There's as large farms, this industrial food system, or big ag as it's called, we're going to develop small farm businesses that grow monoculture. Ours is all about diversity. How many different types of crops can you grow? All right, theirs is going to be chemically, chemically dependent. Ours is going to be sustainably grown. Theirs is going to be this anonymous source that you buy from every day. Where is that food coming from? You go on our website, you click on the product, it'll tell you exactly who grew it. Theirs is a distribution system that requires on 10 to 14 day delivery because it goes through a refrigerated system that's picked green. All right, it's industrialized, it's mass produced. All right, and I will have an aside, you pay for a lot of that, it's subsidized, heavily subsidized. Ours is gonna be just in time delivery. When you go online and you order from one of our farmers, the farmer usually goes out and picks it and then we deliver it within 24 hours. Theirs is going to be coming between 1,300 and 1,500 miles on average. Ours is going to be 75 miles, just up in the mountains. All right? Forbes magazine says that industrial ag system, the farmer only makes 19.1%. I think it's less. With ours, we're going to treat the farmer equitably, and the farmer will get four times that amount of money. With theirs, it actually has destroyed communities. Big ag has reduced the number of farms in this country, most of them small family farms, from 7 million to 2 million in less than 50 years. We're going to rebuild our regional economy using this. So we came up with a concept called the Farmer's Fresh Market, an electronic market. Anybody here been on it before? Any of our customers in here? <laughs> and uh, we, um, we have hundreds of farmers that display their wares on the website and then chefs, and now consumers are going on and picking those products, and we deliver to them uh, later on within 24 hours. But there was a problem. <laughs> there was no broadband. All right, when I came there in uh, uh, February of, uh, of 2007, when this issue finally came to a head, not one school in our county had connection to high-speed internet. Can you imagine that? Not one. By 2008, every school was connected, and now every uh, first responder is connected. And now we're taking that distribution of fiber optics and we're creating a wireless internet that we're beaming out to the most rural areas of the county. All right, and we did that with a, we went out and raised 1.44 million from the Golden Leaf Foundation. And so broadband's a key, but the other key is education. 
we need to invest in these people. These are all of our classes. All right, we've had, um, I've, I personally trained an 84-year-old and an 82-year-old to use the internet. All right, I've had to overcome thing, one, uh, things like, uh, uh, one man told me that the internet was 666, and I said, pardon me? He said, the mark of the beast. Pardon me? Uh, we've, we've uh, in, a, in, a, in a state whose, made, whose number one economy is agriculture, we started the only sustainable ag program in the high school in the state. Isn't that something? But you can't get the kids in high school. By that time, uh, nobody's taken somebody like Allison Smith into a classroom and said, you know, Allison, you seem like a bright girl. You should be a farmer. That conversation's not taking place. So we said, we've got to train these kids and expose them to agriculture at a much earlier age. So we have a grade school program called Horticulture as Science. We, had, we matched the science, North Carolina science credits with, the, um, uh, with a um, junior master gardener program out of uh, Texas A&T. We teach people business. Farming is a business. One of the first farmers I worked with when I said, well, how do you set your pricing? And he said, well, whatever to give me. I said, who give you? Well, the packing house. I said, well, do you drive there? He said, well, yeah. I said, well, when you get gas, what do you pay? Whatever the guy, you know, whatever you want to give the guy? I mean, what's your, how do you know what your cost is? And he said, well, around Christmas time, if I got money to buy presents, I've made money and I owe my family money, I've lost money. All right, so we've, we've got to do something about that. We had hundreds, literally hundreds of people approach us and say, we think we can do this. We've got the land, but we don't know how to farm anymore. That's 100 years of experience in the textile mills. We forgot how to farm. So we're teaching the farmers how to farm. We have classes. We've graduated uh, 140 adults to make them farmers. This high school program started with 75 kids, where 35 of them are in there because the teacher's six foot seven. Uh, then it went to uh, 150, 225, and this year we got 300 kids learning sustainable ag. We have a fully functioning farm that we raise money for, and we teach the kids sustainable agriculture. So education is the next key, and this is why. Because when we talk about this, this really isn't about food, probably about jobs, it's kind of about broadband, but it's really about social justice. In Appalachia, when we find it a little bit amusing when they talk about the bubble that burst in Wall Street. During that five-year period of 2000 and 2005, the bubble, our economy shrunk 22%. So the opportunity is this. This is a, we didn't know it had a name. This is a slide. This describes the eighth largest economic region in the world. Not the United States, the world. It's called Charlanta. <laughs> yeah. And you see that bright light, that the bright light that goes from Atlanta to Charlotte, and that hazy cloud behind it? That's Appalachia. So we are in a process, we got another grant from Golden Leaf and a grant from the North Carolina Rural Center. We are taking this program across Appalachia. It's already functioning in Rockingham that is delivering food today to Winston-Salem and the Greensboro market. Watch out Raleigh and the rest of the Piedmont. We're forming a group in Cherokee to serve the Atlanta market, and I'm out there tomorrow, uh, Monday and Tuesday to, to uh, organize the farmers for the Outer Banks. But ultimately, we'll do everything we can. Ultimately, you're the choice. You're the people who are gonna make the decision. We're powerless. You have the power of the purse. And all you have to do to allow us to win is three things. Buy local, buy fresh, and buy environmentally sensitive. And big ag cannot even get in the stadium, let alone play the game. Thank you.